The 17th century is often regarded as an age of towering intellectual figures, and Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was perhaps the most ambitious among them. A philosopher, mathematician, logician, diplomat, and scientist, he sought not merely to advance human knowledge, but to unify it, to construct a comprehensive system that could explain the fundamental principles of reality. His contributions laid the foundations for modern calculus, symbolic logic, and even the early concepts behind computing. His philosophy, centered on the idea that the universe operates according to a pre-established harmony, stands as one of the boldest attempts to reconcile science, metaphysics, and theology into a single coherent vision. He argued that we live in the best of all possible worlds, a claim that has sparked centuries of debate. Yet for all his brilliance, Leibniz was not without controversy. His assertion that this world, despite its suffering, was the most optimal creation of a rational and benevolent God, was met with both admiration and scorn. Despite this, Leibniz's intellectual legacy remains unparalleled. He was, in many ways, the last of a rare kind, the universal genius, a thinker who refused to be confined to a single discipline, who saw knowledge as a grand, interconnected whole. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button, as it would really help the channel. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz was born in 1646 in Leipzig, a city in the Holy Roman Empire that was, at the time, a hub of intellectual and religious discourse. The Thirty Years' War had only recently ended, leaving behind a fractured Europe grappling with questions of political stability, scientific progress, and theological authority. This environment shaped the young Leibniz, who from an early age displayed an insatiable curiosity, devouring books on philosophy, law, and mathematics while still a child. By the age of 12, he had already taught himself Latin and Greek, enabling him to engage with the works of Aristotle and other foundational thinkers. Leibniz's formal education was equally impressive. He entered the University of Leipzig at just 14, studying philosophy and law. His early writings reveal a mind eager to synthesize different schools of thought, finding connections where others saw contradictions. His ambitions led him beyond the confines of academia. Unlike many philosophers who spent their lives in universities, Leibniz became deeply involved in European political and intellectual circles. He worked as a librarian, diplomat, an engineer, and an advisor to some of the most powerful rulers of his time. His stepped reckoner, a mechanical calculator capable of performing all four basic arithmetic operations, advanced beyond Blaise Pascal's earlier design and foreshadowed modern computing. His fascination with logical structures led him to develop binary number systems, recognizing their potential as a universal method of calculation a concept that now forms the foundation of digital technology. As an engineer, he designed hydraulic systems for draining mines and developed an innovative water pump powered by windmills to improve resource extraction in the Hartz Mountains, where he worked between 1680 and 1685. His intellectual ambitions also extended to geology, where his work, Protogea, proposed that the Earth's formation resulted from natural processes such as volcanic activity, sedimentation and erosion, moving away from strictly biblical explanations. Additionally, Leibniz was a visionary in the cataloguing and organisation of knowledge, advocating for a universal encyclopaedia that would systematise human understanding. His ideas anticipated modern information science, library classification, and even the development of databases and artificial intelligence. These contributions reflect not just his brilliance, but his relentless pursuit of a unified intellectual system. One that sought to bridge the gap between theory and practice, between abstract reason and real-world application. Few intellectual rivalries in history have been as contentious or as consequential as that between Leibniz and Sir Isaac Newton. At the centre of their dispute was the discovery of calculus, a mathematical breakthrough that would revolutionise physics and engineering. Both men 
developed the fundamental principles of calculus independently, Newton in England and Leibniz in mainland Europe. Yet a bitter controversy erupted over who had arrived at the method first. Leibniz notation, which introduced the integral and differential symbols still used today, proved more practical and influential in the long run, while Newton's approach was largely confined to British mathematics for much of the 18th century. However, the dispute was not merely one of academic credit. It became deeply personal, with Newton's allies, particularly the Royal Society, launching accusations of plagiarism against Leibniz. Newton himself, though publicly reserved, orchestrated much of the campaign against his rival, ensuring that Leibniz's contributions were downplayed in Britain. Beyond their mathematical dispute, the two thinkers also held starkly different philosophical perspectives. Newton's universe was largely mechanistic, governed by physical laws set in motion by a divine creator but unfolding deterministically. Leibniz, by contrast, envisioned a world of monads, where each fundamental entity operated according to its own internal principle, bound together by pre-established harmony. Their clashing views reflected not just two competing approaches to science and philosophy, but two fundamentally different ways of understanding reality itself. One rooted in empirical observation and forces, the other in metaphysical principles and rational order. While their personal feud cast a shadow over their correspondence, history has recognized both as towering intellectual figures, each shaping the modern world in ways that neither could have fully foreseen. Another point of contention between Leibniz and Newton was vis viva, Leibniz's concept of living force, which anticipated modern kinetic energy. While Newtonian mechanics focused on momentum, mass times velocity, Leibniz argued that true force was mass times velocity squared, a principle that later contributed to energy conservation laws. This debate reflected their broader philosophical divide. Newton's mechanistic universe versus Leibniz's vision of a reality governed by rational principles. By the end of his life, Leibniz had amassed an astonishing body of work, ranging from metaphysics to mathematics, logic to linguistics. Yet despite his intellectual achievements, he died in relative obscurity in 1716, with only his personal secretary attending his funeral. The world had not yet fully grasped the magnitude of his contributions. It would take generations for philosophers, scientists and logicians to appreciate the depth of his insights. His polymathic nature made him a sought-after figure in both intellectual and political circles. Yet throughout his many roles, philosophy remained his central pursuit. He believed that human reason, if properly guided, could uncover the fundamental principles governing reality an optimism that permeated all his work. At the heart of Leibniz's philosophy lies a profound conviction. Reality is not a random or chaotic expanse, but an intricately ordered system governed by reason. Unlike thinkers who saw the world as composed merely of material substances interacting mechanically, Leibniz proposed a radically different vision. One in which the universe is made up of fundamental, indivisible entities called monads. These monads are not physical particles, but metaphysical points of force, each possessing its own internal principle of activity and perception. They do not interact in the way physical objects do, but rather each follows its own preordained course in perfect harmony with all others. This is what Leibniz famously called pre-established harmony, a concept that sought to resolve philosophical questions about causality and the relationship between mind and body. For Leibniz, everything in the universe, from the smallest atom to the human, the human soul, was composed of monads, each reflecting the entire cosmos from its own unique perspective. This idea allowed him to maintain both a rationalist and a theistic worldview, as he saw monads as expressions of divine reason. Unlike Descartes, who divided reality into two distinct substances, mind and matter, Leibniz argued for 
a more unified vision, where even seemingly inert objects possessed some degree of perception. This led him to the conclusion that the universe itself is not just an arrangement of lifeless matter, but a realm of dynamic, self-contained entities unfolding according to a logical order. Closely tied to this metaphysical system was Leibniz's famous assertion that we live in the best of all possible worlds. At first glance, this claim appears startling, particularly when confronted with suffering, evil and imperfection. But Leibniz was not suggesting that the world is free from hardship. Rather, he argued that given the infinite number of possible ways reality could have been structured, God, being both rational and benevolent, chose the one that maximized overall goodness while allowing for free will and the existence of natural laws. To Leibniz, evil was not an independent force, but a necessary aspect of a world in which genuine agency and moral development were possible. This reasoning, though intellectually rigorous, would later be met with sharp criticism, most famously from Voltaire, who saw it as an overly abstract justification for human suffering. Furthermore, Leibniz championed the principle of sufficient reason, a cornerstone of his philosophy. This principle asserts that everything that exists must have a reason for its existence. Nothing happens without a cause, and every truth has a justification. This principle, while seemingly simple, has profound implications for our understanding of the universe guiding our inquiries into the nature of causation, the existence of God, and the very foundations of knowledge itself. Leibniz's contributions to logic and mathematics also reflect his deep belief in rational order. Long before the formal development of modern symbolic logic, he envisioned a universal language of thought, a characteristica universalis, that could encode all human knowledge into precise, calculable symbols. His dream was to create a system in which philosophical and scientific disputes could be resolved not through rhetoric, but through logical calculation. An idea that, centuries later, would inspire developments in computing and artificial intelligence. His work in binary mathematics, where he recognised the power of a number system based solely on ones and zeros, foreshadowed the very foundation of modern computing. Through his metaphysics, logic and optimism, Leibniz sought to construct a vision of reality that was deeply rational, mathematically structured and ultimately meaningful. Whether one accepts or rejects his conclusions, his system remains one of the most ambitious attempts to reconcile philosophy, science and theology into a unified whole. Leibniz's ideas did not fade into obscurity after his death, Rather, they became a foundation upon which later thinkers would build, challenge and refine their own philosophical inquiries. In an age increasingly driven by specialisation, Leibniz's intellectual breadth stands as both an inspiration and a challenge. To think more broadly, to seek connections where others see divisions, and to embrace the possibility that reason may yet illuminate even the deepest mysteries of existence. His ideas may be centuries old, but they continue to speak to the present. The questions he posed about the nature of reality, the limits of reason and the structure of knowledge remain as relevant now as they were in his time. Perhaps that is the mark of true philosophical genius. Not merely to provide answers, but to ask the kind of questions that endure across generations, inviting each new age to engage with them once again. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to join us on this journey of exploring philosophy, psychology, and the thinkers who shaped our world.